general, no matter what you do, you could end up here. That's right, you could go to jail for most of the offenses listed in the cybercrime laws. The government has recently pulled out the big guns as far as the new regulations are concerned. So what are these new rules? What can and can't you do online on the internet in Pakistan? Oves Bangalwala takes a look at what could put you behind bars if you mess with the net. It's not a fun place to be, especially if you have to spend the rest of your life over here. That's right. Life imprisonment is what you might get if you mess with the web and get caught. I'm here to tell you what you should do to avoid being sent to the prison and what is written in the law books. It was the new government of President Asif Ali Zardari which enforced the Prevention of Electronic Crimes Ordinance, that is the PECO, in the year 2008. The sections in the ordinance are way too many to be covered over here. But what we have done is that we have prepared a list of the top four things which you should not do on the internet. Number one. Do not engage in terrorism on the internet. The word terrorism isn't well defined in the cyber law books of Pakistan. But if someone has the intent to alarm, damage, harm or frighten another person by using a computer which might result in their death, sickness or injury, he or she can be given the death penalty or life imprisonment. Electronic fraud is number two on our list. As seen recently by the FIA raids of the infamous Kanani and Kalia offices and the arrests of their owners, the government can imprison anyone who wrongfully deceives another person which may cause damage or harm to them. The price one will have to pay for such a crime is seven years in prison and a fine. Hate getting spam email? That's number three on our list. Spamming. Spam mail is a pain for most. It's when you are eagerly waiting to check your email and when it opens up, nearly three-fourths of the stuff in your inbox is from the makers of Viagra or someone stating that you have won a million dollars. That's when you and I might wish that these spammers are given life imprisonment for the overdose of spam. But anyone caught perpetrating such an act would be fined 50,000 rupees. Repeat offenders will be given three months in jail. And saving the best for last. Beware you Facebook, Orkut and MySpace users, stalking isn't legal. Want to take a picture of that girl sitting across the room? Don't even think about it. Anyone caught doing such a thing can be sent to the lockup for a minimum 7 years. This includes a fine of 300,000 also. So watch what you do on the internet, cause the cyber police might be tracking you. I'm OS Mangalwala telling you to stay safe on the virtual waves because you don't want to end up over here. <clears throat> it really doesn't smell very nice. I could go on and on about blogging, domains, websites, social networking, tweeting, and all that technical stuff. But before we go there, what is a blog? Who can blog? And why is it even called a blog? Adnan Tariq takes a look at the fundamentals of blogging and four bloggers who you don't want to miss. So you've been hearing the term blog everywhere and want to know what it's all about. Every human being has a voice in them wishing to be heard. A blog gives you that avenue on the internet. It's a place where you collect interesting facts, write about what you want and display it for the whole world to read. So before we delve into the basics of blogging, a little history is needed to put things into perspective. The term blog was agreed to have been invented by John Barger. As a name for his robot wisdom website in December 1997. But he was not the first blogger. It was a doctor by the name of Glenn Barry who officially started a web based commentary way back in 1993, linking his page to other articles on his forest protection website. Blogging then started gaining popularity in 1998 due to the introduction of blog tools and online diaries like the Live Journal and Open Diary. And by 2004, it had become popular throughout the world. Blogging is a very easy task and only a few simple steps are needed. Choosing a provider to make an account is the first step. 
Some of the famous ones are WordPress, Blogspot, and TypePad. Choosing the template and format of your blog is the next one. And lastly, start posting your images, videos, text, opinions, or any form of media, and you're ready to go. Blogs can be of different types or genres. They can be about politics, food, travel, news, or personal in nature. The different types can be categorized under live blogging, podcast, videocast, or photo logs. Beware of the four people I'm about to introduce to you. They are the people behind some of the hardest hitting blogs of Pakistan. First up is Dr. Awab Alvi writing in his blog Teeth Maestro, who in his post titled Jadugar of Jadda writes, Peer Zada, mysterious, influential and scorned by Pakistan's protesters, fixes things when military rulers take over here, scripting temporary charters and new oaths of office as constitutions are shredded and judges dismissed. Next up is Manan Ahmed from ChapatiMystery.com, who in his post, Birds of War 2, wrote, India claimed to have shot two militants outside of New Delhi. The coverage for that reminded me, I kid you not, when we used to find raw agents adding water to milk during the Aul Haq's regime. Some things never change, I guess. Third in line is the exceptionally frank Amir Hamza, whose blog called Wanderer has ruffled a lot of feathers. In his post Operation Cleanup, he writes, As Mohajis have traditionally called Karachi their city, it is their duty, if they have been innocent all through this carnage, to come out, speak against these events and mark the offenders. And lastly, we have a captain from the Karachi Metro Block team. A man of little words only when he's not on the keyboard. In his post, I choose war over peace, he writes. For once, would this commercial media learn to spread harmony, love and talk about fighting the terrorists and not another whole country, which they think is their enemy.